Yo, today I'm showing you a bunch of hidden features and settings for your Fire Stick and Fire TV devices of all sorts. Doesn't really matter which one you have. All the things I'm covering today are not known by the average user and they're gonna be super useful. Starting off with the ability to use your smartphone as an extra remote for your Fire Stick. All you gotta do is go to the App Store on your phone, look up the Fire TV app. It's an official one from Amazon. Once you do that, you'll select your TV on your phone and you'll have a little code appear on the TV. You go ahead and type it in and that'll pair the two together and you'll be able to use this as a fully functional remote control. Now this remote's actually a little bit better than the standard one because if you look in the top corner here, there is a keyboard icon. If you click on that, you can go ahead and use your smartphone keyboard to type away rather than going one key at a time like you would on this normal remote. So I've covered this before and I'm surprised how many people don't know about it. If you're one of those people, definitely go download the Fire TV app and take advantage of it. So after showing you that, I'm gonna actually jump within the Fire Stick and show you a few more things. To make sure that you could take advantage of all the features I'm about to cover, I'm gonna quickly show you how to make sure you're on the latest update. What you're gonna wanna do is go over to the settings menu on the right hand side over here, go down into the option that says My Fire TV, go ahead and click on that. And within this, you just go ahead and click on About and then go to the bottom here where it says check for update. If you go ahead and click on that, it'll check real quick. If it has an update, it'll download it and then it'll ask you to install it. You're gonna wanna do that until you see the message on the right hand side that says your Fire TV is up to date. Once it says that, you're good to go and I'm just gonna go back. All right, the next thing I'm gonna go over is a really, really useful option called the Dialogue Enhancer. So I'm sure you've been there where you're watching a movie or a TV show and the people's words aren't very clear and basically you constantly have to have closed captioning on to understand what they're saying. So this setting will fix that for you and I'm gonna quickly show you how to turn it on. So once again, we're back in the Fire Stick in the settings menu. What you're gonna to wanna to do from here is go to display and sounds. Then you go down to audio then go down to advanced audio, and here's the option we're looking for. It's called Dialogue Enhancer. It clearly states, boost the vocals to make it easier to understand the dialogue. All you gotta do is select that and it'll turn on. There's another useful setting here called Volume Leveler that you might as well turn on. This makes it so that when you change between apps, the volume levels aren't gonna be drastically different. So if you're watching a YouTube video and it sounds okay, you switch over to Netflix and it's super loud, this is an option that will fix that for you. So I already showed you how to use your smartphone as a keyboard for your Fire Stick, but did you know there's also a way that you can mirror your entire smartphone screen to your TV? That way you can show people around you um, different photos on your phone, or if there's specific apps or something you wanna put on your TV, you can go ahead and do that. So let me show you how it's done. So if you have an Android phone, it's as simple as holding down the home button and these options will appear and you'll see an option for mirroring. When you select that, it'll bring you through the instructions on how to connect your phone. But for iPhone users, you can go over to the search option here, go down and type in air screen. I only typed in two letters and it already showed up here. This is the one we want. Now I already downloaded it, but you guys will have the option to download once you select it. Now right here, it just tells me the Wi-Fi I'm connected to. And then you're gonna get this QR code. So you can open the camera app on your phone, aim it right at this code. And from there, it'll give you all the instructions you need to just simply pair your phone. And now I could do whatever I want and have it show up on my TV. Next thing I wanna show you is a quick way to free up storage on your Fire Stick without having to delete the apps that you use. And since the Fire Stick is notoriously low on storage all the time, this should really come in handy. We're back in the Fire Stick in the settings menu once again. If you go down here, you're gonna to wanna to go to applications and then down to manage installed applications. Real quick before you click this, you can see on the right hand side how much storage you have. So in order to free up some space, you can go through each app here. It's telling you to press the rewind button to clear cache. So when you clear the cache, it will remove some data, but none of it will be important. The app will still be there. Your login will still be saved. It's basically deleting some junk files. So what you can do is literally go through every single one of these apps, press the rewind button, confirm, and then just keep doing this all throughout the entire list here. And you'll be able to free up quite a bit of space by doing this with no real downside. Now this next thing is another game changer. And what I'm talking about is the ability to add some extra ports to to your Fire Stick. So typically it's just this one 
USB port right here for powering it, but you can buy yourself a hub like this. Now there's a few different options, but I'll link this exact one in the description. It's sold on Amazon. Basically how it works is this, this one side is a micro USB cable that can plug directly into the fire stick like this. Now they're connected and you'll see this has three USB ports on it as well as an ethernet port. So with ethernet, you could actually get better connection than you would with Wi-Fi. And that might help with buffering and things like that. But beyond that, with the USB ports, you can connect all sorts of stuff. You can connect USB drives, you can connect SD card readers. I even have a remote control right here that's got a keyboard on the back of it that plugs in with USB. So you might be wondering how does the Fire Stick receive power if this is plugged in? It simply comes with its own power cable that plugs into the side right here, and then it'll still plug in with USB like the original power cable. I think these adapters are usually between like 10 and $15 on Amazon. Like I said, I'll leave it linked below. All right, so we're gonna go back into the Fire Stick to show you this next feature. For those who don't know, the Fire Stick has built-in Bluetooth, and there's actually some cool ways you could use it. So if we go back into the settings menu and we go down to the section that says controllers and bluetooth you're going to want to go down to other bluetooth devices and this is going to be where you can connect a new bluetooth device so on the right hand side it says you can connect bluetooth remotes keyboards and mice but you can also connect wireless headphones to listen to whatever you're watching privately and another idea i've seen people do is connect bluetooth speakers and what you do is you take the Bluetooth speaker and you put it next to yourself or like behind the couch. So that way, whatever you're watching is coming through a audio source that's near you. And it actually makes it way easier to hear. Next up is a way to help speed up your Fire Stick a little bit. Because something most people don't know is when you have an app open on your Fire Stick, let's say I have Prime Video open here. When I press the home button or the back button to get out of it, it's still running in the background. All the different apps you've ever opened are probably still running in the background and can definitely be affecting your performance. So what you got to do is go to the settings menu, go to applications, go to manage installed applications, and whatever app you had open, you can find it and click on it. So we'll use Prime Video again for this example. Once I click on it, there's an option to force stop. So that's really the only way to close out of apps completely on the Fire Stick. But what you're going to want to do is just go through all the different apps you really don't use anymore that you once had open and just go ahead and force stop them. By doing that, you should be able to notice a little bit of a speed increase. Another thing I want to mention, if your Fire Stick is running kind of slow or having random issues, when you turn off your Fire Stick at night, it never actually turns off completely. It always goes to a sleep mode. And the only way to actually power it off would be to unplug it. But if you go down to my fire tv in the settings menu and you go down to the option that says restart you can do this as well and it'll fully power down the fire stick reboot itself but beyond that this ends up solving some occasional slowdowns and random issues that you might be having all right these next few things are actually going to be pretty quick and easy to explain first thing i want to show you is if you go to network and you hover over your wi-fi router that you're connected to you can go ahead and press the play button and by doing that, you'll run like a Wi-Fi connection test. And here it will tell you if there's any issues with your Wi-Fi connection. You can also click the run speed test to see how good your speeds are. Besides that, if you look at the Wi-Fi icon itself on the right, it should have a total of three lines filled out for the maximum connection speed. If you have any of them that are slightly grayed out like this, where this only has one line, that means you're too far away from your Wi-Fi router or your signal is just not strong. The way you would solve this is either move your Wi-Fi router closer or get something like a Wi-Fi range extender that looks like this, and that should help you with any connection issues you might be having. Next, I want to show you a quick way you can check the battery levels on your remote control. And what you got to do is go down to controllers and Bluetooth, go to Amazon Fire TV remotes, and you'll see this is the remote control I'm using right now. And on the right hand side, it says battery and mine says okay, which means it's probably about halfway dead. It'll also say good or very good depending on your battery level. Another quick thing I wanna show you is when you're on the home page on your Fire Stick, sometimes you'll have stuff that automatically starts playing and that could be pretty annoying. So I always turn that off. And the way you do that is settings and then preferences. And then you're gonna go down to featured content. 
So where it says allow video autoplay, you can turn that off. And you could also turn off allow audio autoplay. And that's just a personal preference for me. They kind of hide that in the settings. Now staying in this preferences menu, if you go to privacy settings, I recommend turning all of these off. It makes it so that your device no longer sends your usage data or what apps you're using and things like that to Amazon. It's pretty unnecessary and I've heard that it also takes a little bit of your Fire Stick's resources to run these things in the background. So it's definitely worth turning them off. Now also while you're here, if you go down to data usage monitoring, I would also turn that off. So ever since Amazon's updated the Fire Stick with this new look, they actually made the developer options way more confusing to access, um, but I'm gonna quickly show you how to do that. So if you go to My Fire TV, and what you gotta do is click on About, and right here will be the name of your device you're currently using. I believe you have to click it seven times and that'll actually enable the developer options. So you'll see on the bottom here, it says I'm already a developer. For you, it'll tell you how many more times you have to click it to turn on developer options. Once they are on, you'll see them right here underneath the about section. This is gonna be where you can actually turn on the install unknown apps feature that lets you download apps that aren't from the Amazon App Store. So that's actually everything I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. If you liked the video, please click like and feel free to subscribe.